had just delivered us some complimentary pizza. As thanks for patching up their boys after they got a little too intimate with a xenomorphs on mining station. Br Charlie, stop. We gotta watch a video now. That's what we're talking about! Yeah! <laughs> what is up guys? Jack here with another video. So today I am taking out a video by Sevzincha. I hope that I'm pronouncing this correctly. But when, whenever I got to say like combination of those letters, I'm always thinking about Zench, which is like a, a, a god within the 4K universe, Warhammer 4K. But <clears throat> this is a video game reviewer. And for some reason, he has on his banner like the picture of like Congolese warlord. I I know that uh, the sigil there on his shoulder pad. Why? Can you explain to me why? <laughs> I don't get it. You'll shoot before you walk. You know that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Okay, that that's fun. Now uh, we'll be checking one of his most popular videos called uh, Station 13, but before we get to that, I, I, I've i never heard of this game before, so uh, uh, I want to double check just a little bit like what it is about. Alright here, so it says that Station 13 is a community developed multiplayer round based role playing game, well that's a mouthful, where players assume the role of a crew member on Space Station. Together, they must keep the station running smoothly. Sounds kind of like Among Us, but I'm supposing this one is a lot older. Whilst dealing with antagonistic forces who threaten to sabotage the mission. At the beginning, each round, the players select a crew member's role on the station. This range from high ops position, like the captain, and heads of staff, to engineer, scientist, medical doctor, security officers, all the way down to the lower responsibilities roles such as the janitor and lower as and lowly assistant. At round start, one or more players will be given an antagonistic role at random and a secret objective that is very likely to cause disruption in the mission. So basically, Among Us stole the blood from this, didn't they? I mean, uh, if uh, hopefully I'm not mistaken, because I, I just can't remember if it was uh, about the end of 2019. Spacious, yeah, this is February 2003. Oh my God, this is way older. God damn. Uh, they could have sued for this, couldn't they? But anyways, uh, let's not uh, tarry too much on this, and let's just check out the review by Sezincha. Hey people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a very niche, very infamous, and very awesome game that everyone's asked me to cover since day one. A game where you and many other real, living people with questionable social intelligence roleplay <laughs> together on the worst space station in the universe, where aliens, shapeshifters, and traitors working for rival corporations are the least of your concern, oh where my. the greatest threat to your own existence are your own crew members. Hungry? Come to the station canteen, where the food is definitely poisoned, injured, head on down to medical, where half a medication has been relabeled as happy pills. Discouraged? You can try taking a painkiller instead, but it oh was my. a painkiller, it was LSD. Having a bad trip? Don't worry, there's a security officer nearby to help, but he can't respond because he was murdered and replaced by a genetically modified monkey wearing his uniform. Hallucinating? <laughs> Keep calm and focus on what's real. Unfortunately for you, the supermassive black hole exposed expanding towards you is not a hallucination. It is, in fact, very real. The emergency shuttle has been called. Welcome to Space Station 13. Space wow. Station 13 has a very simple premise. Everyone has a job. Your objective? Do your best to delay the station's inevitable destruction, either at the hands of antagonists or at the hands of your own incompetent crew. Normally, I give a final score for a game at the end of a video. Not this time. Space Station 13, 10 out of 10. And amazing, spectacular, <laughs> don't play it. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, Space Station 13 is a fantastic game, but I genuinely don't recommend you play it. Why? Because the engine it's running on is probably older than you. Because the interface is a convoluted yeah. mess, and only usable because me and every other autistic chimpanzee who plays this game has committed on, the hotkeys to Charlie. muscle memory. Because of the insane time investment and commitment required for you to learn a single role, and because, to be 
perfectly honest, the servers can't handle all of you. At best, we can handle, like, 30 extra players before you grind the servers to a halt. For all these reasons, Space Station 13 always was and always will be a niche title. And maybe that's for the best. But I can offer you something else. I've already killed your hopes and dreams of playing the game, so instead, let me share some stories of my wonderful experience with Space Station 13. These stories span several years and several different servers, the names of which will forever <laughs> stay anonymous because I respect their privacy and because I've received... <laughs> Extreme purring right here. Somebody is in high need of affection. If you could purr just a little bit louder, could make a big box or something. <laughs> you good? Right, let's keep going. Frets from some of the more colorful servers to not mention them by name, or else, what's gonna happen if I don't comply? Are they gonna hire a Bitcoin assassin to <laughs> run me over with his mobility scooter? Is he gonna stab me with his insulin pen? I don't know. <laughs> but between you and me, I don't I think he has to. Having the funds to do that. To my mailbox and would prefer to keep it that way. Anyway, I remember the first time playing Space Station very vividly. My friends told me to download it and hop on some shitty server. It had furries and erotic roleplay. More on that oh, later. Oh, but I of course it did. As an assistant, my job to give assistance and to get my hands burnt off trying to hack into places I don't have access to. As I'm screwing around with airlock wires, my friend comes running down the hallway, dragging someone's unconscious body. Frantically, he tells me, Seth, quick, can you open this door? Sensing the urgency in his voice, I do. He throws the body inside and sprints away. The airlock closes. Three seconds later, something explodes. What the fuck was that? I ask. <laughs> oh yeah, I fed him potassium and water pills. It takes a while to metabolize. My friend had just murdered a man in cold blood by turning his body into a living, ticking potassium bomb. As what soon as the? the man's digestive juices cracked through the potassium tablet, it reacted violently with the water in his stomach and exploded. Yeah! Him from inside out. After such a horrific display of homicide, I realized, hey, this game's pretty good. Fast forward a few this game is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's got the science right, at least. Well, depends on how you want to make the chemical reaction go, but yeah. That's <laughs> Who thinks of that? See, that's one of the classic that I, like, not kind of, but really love about old school games. Like, there was such an attention to details, especially when the platform was made, or engine made, kind of uh, easy for everybody else to understand, so people could just go on ahead and develop on it. That's why, like, although a company like, for example, Bethesda will never truly live up to that name again, but like the glory of Skyrim is something that an idiot like myself who could not know how to code could look at that and be like, hey. I can try and do some mods. And like the thing that you could make well it was kind of tangible. And that like that's a solid what nine years difference between that and Skyrim. So it just goes to show how much it is that we are capable of doing. Like even a game like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, which is like way more complicated now, is being fixed. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that having a good community it gets your head quite far weeks and I'm learning roles, calling shots, and ignoring every single rule of a server. I also ignored every single rule of medicine. I was a surgeon, top of my class, destined to go where no licensed professional ever has. Also, my friend's girlfriend started playing with us. To put it bluntly, she wasn't very good, but she was very interested in progressing the medical field in any way possible. Cargo oh no. had just delivered us some complimentary pizza. As thanks for patching up their boys after they got a little little too intimate with a xenomorphs on mining station. Brilliance flashed before my eyes. My pupils widened. I started physically sweating because she said the words I've always dreamt of hearing. Please turn me into a pizza. And so I got to work. <laughs> Nurse, get me my scalpel, tweezers, protractor, bone gel, and the rest of the unfinished pizza. One horrified clown watched in the operating oh, no. theater as I cleanly hacked off and cauterized her hands and feet. I the opened clown's the gonna pizza do something, box huh? and began attaching her new cheesy limbs. Help! 
Sec to surgery, the clown blurted out. He's turning her into a Papa John's. The head of medical stormed in with a host of security officers to detain me, but they were too late. Her hands and feet had already been replaced. Surprisingly, she could walk just fine on a pair of pizza feet, but her lack what? of opposable pizza thumbs meant that she couldn't really hold anything, let alone pick them up in the first place. However, her pizza hands did make for a convenient and portable source of nutrition. Despite her Logic. numerous protests that she consented to the surgery, the head of medical demoted me on the spot and banned me from ever practicing medicine, <laughs> claiming that you can't consent to being a pizza. <laughs> I was thrown in jail for the rest of but the I'm delicious. Really, there was no appreciation for the arts on this station. So, many rounds later, me and my friends found a new purpose, cleaning up the server one erotic furry roleplay at a time. Using oh, telecommunications no. and metacommunications, I expertly pinpointed areas of high homosexual intelligence Stop them from yiffing at all cost. Namely, the dorm rooms and the showers. As two Khajiit looking cat men meet privately with one another, they will inevitably start writing words such as, Ooh, my act has a barbed prickly surprise for you, my friend. And, mm, yes, not me with your thick. Tajaran trunk. This is completely unacceptable. Once an act of high homosexual intent is in motion, several of our men would mobilize. As they groan, moan, and spit out hairballs <laughs> on each other, a security <laughs> officer would barge in, flashbang the feline fornicators, and tag team baton them into submission before another officer handcuffs them to the bed on the other side of a contaminated. Yo, that sounds like something that you will hear after a Comic Con for some reason. Officer tag team, the <laughs> feline fornicators. <laughs> I proceeded to batoon them. The dorm room, our team's atmospheric technician sets explosive C4 charges against the station glass. Quickly, we evacuate the biohazard exclusion zone and seal the airlocks. Homeo and Juliet barely have enough time to recover from the flashbang before the charges detonate, depressurizing the room and sucking their bodies out into the black vacuum of space. Another job well Dude. done. Many explosive decompressions later, erotic roleplay was considered a real occupational hazard. The Duran cat boys got creative, started got a doing club. group sessions instead, but these oh, were geez. quickly crushed by my friend playing the best roboticist I've ever seen in yeah. my life, the airlock door. Yo, my cat is being repulsed by this right now. He can't fathom this attitude. Yeah, I know, right? Freaking weird. But it's furries. Some of them are cool, but some are just <laughs> To their sodomy chamber were welded shut to prevent interruptions. So he drilled right through them with a gigantic combat mech. The air inside was heavy with a sickly sweet smell of wet fur balls and toxoplasmosis. The furries didn't even have time to react before he started unloading shell after shell of flashbang grenades. And thus, Yo. we all got banned. We paid the price. But to see half a server get flashbanged unconscious for 10 minutes straight? Priceless. <laughs> the server didn't last long anyway. The admin's mom shut it down as soon as she saw the electricity bill. So me and my friends went on to enrich other servers. I even got good at being a chemist. In other words, I always stole the syringe gun at the start of a round and filled it with lethal doses of chloral hydrate for my own protection, of course. I also gave whatever chemical anyone requested, which gives me some moral ambiguity and two mm -hmm. degrees of separation from any pranks or murders that took place as a result of said chemicals. At if least a you clown have. asks for space lube, he's gonna get space lube. One time, a clown managed to lube the entire hallway outside of medical, <laughs> all the way to departures. Now, departures is usually the place where the escape shuttle docks to get us out of our quickly burning heap of a station. However, if there's no call for a shuttle, departures is completely empty, besides the airlock, which the clown had hacked open. Several people came running from no. the space lube and accelerated themselves face um, Outside. In infinite vacuum of space. Security figured out it was the clown, and in true security of course fashion, he always was the clown. Space loop with most of a crew floating. It's like Pennywise. Like, he don't tell you that I'm a Pennywise. Like he has been there since the beginning of ages. Like the Bible don't tell you this, but what happened to Moses? Pennywise did it. John the Baptist? Pennywise did it. 
<laughs> That's not canon. Thing around dead in space, the station had to be evacuated. He was later banned from playing clown ever again. Several rounds later, I finally spawned as a traitor. Mission specifications decrypted. Welcome to the Syndicate. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I wanted my first time to be special. Conveniently, an assistant comes in, bleeding all over, because he was probably trying to break into the armory without insulated gloves. His character sprite had maximum melanin and an afro. His <laughs> roleplay friendly name was one. Madik, an idiot but a useful idiot. There were no <laughs> medical staff on hand except me, so I said, hey, I know a little bit of surgery, let me fix you up. I put him under general anesthetic and took out my syndicate PDA. With this, I can discreetly teleport a few traitor items into my inventory to help me achieve my objective, which in this case was murdering the head of security. I ordered two sets of voice activated explosives, which trigger upon hearing the recorded code phrase. I set this to the word most likely to be spoken by this mentally retarded human being. Can you guess oh, no. what that is? I surgically opened his no. ass and inserted the first of the explosives. Then I lodged the second one neatly inside his chest cavity. Closing them up, I took off the anesthetic and began to put my plan in action. I would arm this simple-minded moron with illegal weaponry with the hopes that security would detain him on possession charges. I gave him all the LSD, all the chloral hydrate syringes, and an entire spray bottle of space lube. I had expertly equipped him to be the ultimate dick says nice. proud of my work. I gave him a hug and said him loose on the world but just before he left medical he turned around and said thanks nigger and we both exploded. My other times playing antagonist went about just as well. Once I started as the leader of a cult, our objective was to seize control of the station and sacrifice our mortal bodies to summon a physical Yo. manifestation of our dark god. However, I wasn't very good at it, and neither were my servants. We found a nice, quiet, and most importantly, abandoned bar near the north end of the station, which we began redecorating with our own blood. You see, cultists need to learn a set of ancient words that's randomly generated every round. If you arrange them in the right order, you can perform different spells and rituals to advance your goals. We mm. didn't get far, because the most dangerous thing to an incompetent cult is a single crew member doing their job. The fucking janitor found us. We tried to negotiate, convince him that it's actually crayon and not blood all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, right. Work. So we tried to murder him instead. <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> he beat he you up. his mop to slip us with soapy water and ran off to call security. As you can see, I'm not very proficient at being a traitor. More often, I find myself being abused by traitors. Some of the worst in this regard are definitely wizards, since wizards have a bad tendency to sexually abuse me as well. Not too long ago, me and my friends played a round that was already in progress. As soon as we entered, we realized something was very wrong. An announcement played on the radio. Penis inspection day is in effect. All no! Must report to Doc no! Johnson for their mandatory penis inspection. Doc Johnson was very clearly a wizard. I knew what was coming, and yet I resigned myself to fate and went to medical reception. Doc Johnson was overjoyed to have new patients. He led me to a... His name is Johnson. Come on. It's... <laughs> private room asked me if I was circumcised and told me that I passed the inspection with flying colors. What a surprise, I thought. He's not actually gonna grief me. But I was wrong. As I turned away to leave, he blew off my ass magically. <laughs> hey, it's wizardry. I ain't gotta explain shit. Anyway, Doc Johnson is a terrible doctor. He left me bleeding on the floor as he took my ass cheeks and used them as a hat. Highly unprofessional. Would not recommend. A round of Space Station 13 can be very intense. At other times, it can be very slow low paced and almost relaxing. If you're not a traitor and you don't have anything urgent to handle, you can always just role play and get comfy in a bar, while the piano plays anime songs and the jukebox plays whatever deep fried ASMR bullshit people keep putting on. It's a very wholesome experience and it helps you get emotionally invested with the other members of your crew, which are mm. often nice people. However, security no is often staffed by egotistical megalomaniacs acting out their most depraved power fantasies. They are often not nice people. As a result of their inherent propensity to be insane sociopaths, the rest of the crew will often rebel against their tyranny. In one such case, Cargo had declared independence.
independence, security refused to recognize the independent station state of Cargonia. So they tried to barge their way in and arrest everyone involved, including me. But security was unprepared for the trap we had in store. One officer rushed into Cargo Bay and slipped on a banana peel straight into the conveyor belt waiting for him. He tried repeatedly to get back up, only to be tripped again by an ocean of banana peels on the conveyor belt, which looped around in a circle. Surrounding that circle was another circle, composed entirely of vending machines. The officer was also being brutally assaulted by several hundred cans of soda. The vending machines were hacked, and as a result, they would continuously fire drinks at whoever Yo, was in the area. Get wrecked. slipped into the banana belt, got smashed unconscious by a relentless stream of discount Dan soda. Trademark, all rights reserved. After extensive head trauma by our soda turrets, security reluctantly accepted Cargonia's independence and their right to bear arms. If there's uh, uh, one department that has more revolutions than cargo, it would have to be science, and it's easy to understand why. We spend our lives researching a way for the good of a station, which does of course carry its own share of risks and hazards. Sometimes, accidents happen. Sooner or later, some bored and mentally challenged assistant will try and throw I'm gonna a bag of myself. holding into another bag of holding. And security can't always comprehend that we're not directly responsible for the resulting black hole eating through the kitchen. This lack of appreciation for the scientific profession usually ends with arrest warrants for the whole department, which is usually answered back with the words, I'd like to see you try. But when we're not <laughs> having a nuclear arms race with security, R&D is actually quite a chill department. I also made a great discovery last time I played there. Me and another scientist were messing around with blueprints and eventually made ourselves a pneumatic cannon. Normally, these are used to launch whatever items you have inside. What we didn't know was that it could launch food as well. Yeah, I pressurized. Lasagna, aimed for the mouth and fired it at my fellow researcher. The lasagna disappeared. What the hell? That's amazing, he said. We just realized what happened. I had just managed to remotely force feed my fellow man. But what do we do <laughs> with this forbidden knowledge? Nothing good, that's for sure. My comrade got to work asking chemistry for hallucinogenic drugs. They said no. So we built our own chemistry dispensers, filled up the beakers with happy juice and ran straight to the kitchen. We injected all the donuts and hot pockets we could find with as much LSD and mind breaker toxin as they could hold. Then we loaded Yo, the LSD's popular, huh? system and started firing off at everyone in the hallways. The food was instantly delivered. The crew was instantly satisfied. Several people, including security officers, managed to see the two small lines of text indicating that they've just been fed something. They thought it was extremely <laughs> clever and said they didn't know the pneumatic cannon could do that. Since it was just a bit of harmless fun, we got off scot-free. Minutes <laughs> later, the hallucination started. Starts kicking in. And started screaming on the radio. Some were puking, shaking, or convulsing on the ground. Medical couldn't keep up with the bodies. They <laughs> piled on too quick, and most of the doctors were too busy fighting off non-existent entities to do anything about it. The chemist, who originally refused to give us LSD, was arrested by security on suspicion of intentional food poisoning. It was complete pandemonium, and I think it illustrates perfectly the chaos that is Space Station 13. Dude. The engagement in their role-playing is amazing. It's cooking! That's all I have for you today, folks. There is, of course, more stories to tell, but we'd literally be here for hours. Space Station 13, a marvelous, unique, ten out of ten. And incredible I gave it to game. Them. 10 out of 10, don't play it. Because if you do, they're gonna blame it on me. And I hate <laughs> having come in my mailbox. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. On other news, I started a Subscribestar account, so if you'd like to invest and don't want to give your money to Patreon, now you can. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Yo. 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 We work with fair condition. Yo, this guy is amazing. What an amazing game as well. I, I, I did not, I did not know anything about this. Like Station 13. Like, it feels like a, a what Among Us truly should be. Yeah, it, it should not be one of those games that it, yeah, it shouldn't be touched at all. To just stay, stay just the way that it is. Continuously being worked on by the community. And staying just as stupid. <laughs> it's beautiful.
the guys thank you thank you for recommending space station 13 uh review to me and definitely we'll be taking more of uh zef's of seth's videos but guys if you like this reaction you know what to do hit that like and also subscribe button to see more well with that i would like to wish you a wonderful evening see you guys next time bye